Don't let Nasrallah drag Lebanon into the abyss. We're not at war with you. We're at war with Hezbollah, which has hijacked your country and threatens to destroy ours. As long as Hezbollah chooses the path of war, Israel has no choice and Israel has every right to remove this threat and return our citizens to their homes safely. And that's exactly what we're doing. Just this week, the IDF destroyed large percentages of Hezbollah's rockets, which had built with Iran's funding for three decades. We took out senior military commanders who not only shed Israeli blood, but American and French blood as well. And then we took out their replacements, and then the replacements of their replacements. And we'll continue degrading Hezbollah until all our objectives are made. CBS News reporter Olivia Gazas is outside of the United Nations this morning, and she joins us now. Uh, Olivia, uh, what else did we hear from the prime minister? Um, and more importantly, I mean, we did hear some clapping, some hooting and hollering, uh, but my guess is that was the Israeli delegation. What was the reaction from the U.N. General Assembly to Netanyahu's speech? Sure, Vlad. Well, in keeping with his previous addresses, the prime minister struck a fiery tone, an unrepentant tone, and brought some visuals to make his case, saying he came here to defend his people, his country, and the truth, reminding the chamber first of the atrocities that took place on October 7th when Hamas killed 1,200 Israeli citizens and took hundreds hostage. To that scattered applause, as you noted, he said Israel needed to defend itself against six more fronts that were uh, launched by Iran and proxy groups, in addition to a direct attack by Iran uh, in April. He acknowledged hostage families in the audience and vowed to return loved ones home. Of course, something that uh, his uh, government has failed to do for months since the release of a first batch in November. Uh, he struck throughout his remarks a bullish tone, saying at one point, we are winning. There is no place in Iran that, uh, er, that Israeli military forces can't reach. But things he did not mention, any of the civilian toll uh, that Israeli forces uh, have brought about in Gaza and increasingly now in Lebanon as it uh, escalates uh, its strikes there. Uh, no mention of whether or not the Israelis would accede to a proposal put forth this week by the U.S. and 10 other countries uh, of a ceasefire agreement that would pause the fighting between Israel and Lebanese Hezbollah. In fact, he said Israel would continue degrading Hezbollah until all our objectives are achieved, something that seems at, at very cross purposes with any cessation of hostilities. And paradoxically, he spent a lot of time calling for an historic peace agreement with Saudi Arabia which he said would bring enormous benefits to the region. But he didn't mention the main obstacle to forging that agreement, a sort of path, a viable path to a two-state solution that the U.S. and the Saudis have insisted on and he has opposed uh, since, since he's been prime minister. Um, and Olivia, there's been mounting pressure, obviously, uh, for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to reach a ceasefire with Hezbollah. He's vowed to continue striking with full force and seems skeptical on any type of a deal, it almost seems as if there's some confusion because the reporting out there from you and others was that the United States was signaling that they were getting closer to a ceasefire, uh, but the Israelis saying that's not the case. What are you learning? The U.S. Uh, and ten, uh, more than 10 other countries put forth this proposal earlier this week saying uh, clearly that it was based on close consultations with both the Le Lebanese government and the Israeli government, basically saying they had every indication that this was going to be agreed to. And hours after that proposal was put on the table, the prime minister himself appeared to pour cold water on it, saying, as you said, that they were going to continue hitting Hezbollah hard. It wasn't until late last night that his office put out a paper statement saying that, in fact, the Israeli government shares the goals that the U.S. is trying to achieve in putting forth this proposal proposal appreciates the, eff the efforts that the U.S. is making and others uh, in trying to broker a diplomatic agreement, but making no commitment whatsoever to actually entertaining one. And as you heard in his remarks today, doubling down on uh, insisting that he's going to go after Hezbollah until its capabilities have been degraded. All right, Olivia, thank you very much. 
All right, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky just entered uh, Trump Tower in New York. He is speaking uh, alongside, of course, former President Donald Trump, uh, and the two leaders then met behind closed doors. Let's pause for that, Sot. The president with us, and he's been through a lot. He's been through uh, a tremendous amount, like probably nobody else, almost nobody else in history, if you really get right down to it. And we're going to have a discussion and see what we can come up with. But a uh, great honor to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Brennan. Thank you so much for this meeting. Five, five years plus. Yeah. So we had, yes, uh, we had a meeting again here in New York in September. And now there are a lot of challenges, challenges in Ukraine and the United States. And of course, I want to, to discuss with you, uh, I think, where we are together, I think we have common view that the war in Ukraine has to be stopped and Putin can't win, and Ukrainians have to prevail, and I want to discuss with you the details of our plan, plan of victory. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you have a question for the president? Well, why did you decide to meet? I think it's me, yeah. or both to you. both of us. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, it's very important to share to share all the plan, all our steps, how we can strengthen Ukraine. And of course, we have to decide it now, because after November, we don't know who is, only Americans decide who will be the president. But we understand that till November, we can't stop Putin. We have to do it. We will try on the battlefield with our heroic soldiers. But we understand that after November, we have to decide. And we hope that the strength of the United States will be very strong and we count on it. That's why I decided to meet with both candidates with all honor to them. Thank you. Mr. President. All right, you've been listening to uh, pictures coming in to us right now from New York City, uh, where you can see former President Donald Trump and Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. They are at Trump Tower. Uh, they are going to be meeting behind closed doors. Uh, in the last couple of months, uh, the former president has been critical of President Zelensky, uh, saying that he's been critical of Trump. Uh, but uh, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, uh, the vice president of the United States, and a bipartisan group of legislators are still in full support of the Ukrainian resistance against Russian aggression, but that has come under fire from people like the former president and those who support him.